Hey guys, so this is gonna be a very quick video. This is basically about the gameplay section of the Steam Deck. Now, I will have a full review talking about all the amazing features that this has, but right now I have the 64 gig model Steam Deck. Um, I believe this has like 12, I don't know, eight, 12 gigs of RAM. I forget how much inside of it. Uh, I do have a 512 SSD inside. Uh, so every game is installed on a memory card. I've installed it on a basic memory card, and I've also installed it on one that's substantially faster than the traditional. I haven't had any lag, I haven't had any issues so far. Well, I have had lag and issue, depending on which game it is, but I'm gonna kind of break it down and explain to you which ones. Now, different parts of this video was recorded at different times. So just so you know, I'm doing the intro last, even though I did the other stuff first. I play all the Resident Evil games, meaning two, three, and four for this uh, review. Originally, I was gonna do Cyberpunk, but I decided against it because that game has a lot of profanity and I don't want that to pop up in the subtitles while I'm actually recording. So let's get right into the gameplay section of how well it runs and see if it's worthwhile just on that aspect alone. So right here we have Resident Evil 2 Remake. This is actually on the Steam Deck. Now, certain games are 100% verified that work perfectly fine on Valve. That's something that you will have to look up yourself before actually purchasing any games. Of course, if you're a Steam Deck user and you already own a PC, then most of the games that you have will be compatible, but it's a possibility that a lot of your favorites won't be because of lack of support. So let me give you an example of what it is that I'm talking about so you'll know what to look for moving forward. So right here, I wanna go ahead and pause the game. If you press this button right here, it actually shows you the performance overlay levels. This is something that you should toggle on your own to figure out what games work. Personally, I have my frame rate locked normally at 30. The reason I did that is because I played Dead Space Remake. I actually finished it on the Steam Deck completely, started half the game on the PC itself on a regular desktop. And I had tons of lag and issues and it, it was just a terrible experience on a Steam Deck at first. So once I started playing with this, everything from thermal power to uh, manual GPA clock speed, scaling filters, these are all things that you should try on your own if a particular game isn't working properly. But be aware of the fact that the resolution for these games are typically like 1200 by 800. It sounds pretty low, but when you look at these graphics, let me give you an example right here. When you look at the actual graphics, I know some people say, well, the Switch OLED screen is better. Yeah, you might be right about that. But in terms of what the system is actually capable of doing in terms of power, it just does not compare. And if you look at the smoothness of me just moving around with this particular video playing this game, again, I love the Steam Deck. I actually sold my Switch. I replaced it all together. Uh, I still have my PCs, obviously, but on, on the flip side, normally 90% of the games that I play are in fact on a Steam Deck. Everything from Cyberpunk, which I'm gonna show you how that works too. So I'm gonna do a series of games so you can get an idea of if this is something that you would want. Also, some games can be played offline. Others do require a internet signal. Please do be aware of that. And if you do not have a strong Wi-Fi symbol, occasionally when you hit the Steam section right here, sometimes your Wi-Fi will be connected, sometimes it won't. I experienced that where, you know, I went through dry spells of not being able to connect to the internet, but that's due to my bad connection that I had at home, which I did end up switching internet providers. But with that being said, that's example one. I'm gonna show you an example of a game that's not verified, Steam verified. So you're gonna see a huge difference in graphics, and that's gonna be Resident Evil 3 Remake. It works, but it, it's you could definitely tell the resolution is very fuzzy compared to Resident Evil 2 Remake. So this right here is Resident Evil 3 Remake. And initially when I first turned it on, you may not see much because of, you know, just the quality. I did up the uh, camera to 60 frames 4K. I didn't do that with Resident Evil 2, that's my bad, but this is a little bit smoother. But anywho, I'm gonna go ahead and start the game for you guys and go to continue. And I'm gonna show you how this looks. Now, in my opinion, some people aren't gonna have an issue with this whatsoever. But when you play certain video games, you notice what when there is like a degree of not necessarily lag, but just uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? It's a little fuzzy. So if you look at this right here, you may not be able to tell initially because I'm viewing this through an iPhone, but just the textures of the hair, it looks very, very fuzzy. Now, granted, the game doesn't really have any slowdowns whatsoever. I don't have any uh, graphical issues. I got up to the 
police station with Carlos under a new playthrough. And again, I haven't had any slowdowns. I haven't had any freezing. I had no issues whatsoever with the Steam Deck. Well, I'll say it was an occasional stutter here or there because no system is perfect, but it does a very good job of playing this. Again, it's on the 30 frames that we talked about. I have it set that way for most games. There's no point of stressing the system unnecessarily. I actually want this thing to last a long time. But what I notice is, especially with the graphics, if you look at his face, um, it looks very washed out kind of like almost, I'm not gonna say 2D-ish or anything like that, but you could definitely tell that it looks much more washed out than, than uh, Claire's face in the other game. His hair looks very feathery, not very, how do I describe it? It looks matted. Like you know how older video games back in the day when graphics weren't that great, the hair looks very matted and not realistic at all. That's how this looks. Now again, it's a Steam Deck. I, I don't expect it to have the greatest graphics in the world, uh, even his bag, the camouflage on his bag, the stains, the graphics, it actually hurts my eyes a tad bit only because, um, again, it's not optimized properly. That's why I say when you look at Valve games, and I'm going to show you this right here real fast. Uh, when you look at the library of games that I have, here's some of my library. You see the eye on seven days to die, the eye there, the check mark, the check mark means it's verified through Valve which is the company that makes this, and that the game runs just fine. Uh, even Dead Space says that it's verified. Let me see if I can find it. Dead Space says it's verified, the remake. The problem with that is that it still is a highly, it was a brand new game. Optimization wasn't done perfectly. So again, when you play these types of games, you have to understand that before you click download, there are certain titles like Dragonfall, it works. But the problem is that the controller support really isn't there unless you manually change it yourself, which I can do a tutorial about how to do that too. Skyrim, it has an eye, but Skyrim works perfectly fine. I've downloaded many mods on this thing. I actually downloaded so many mods that my game is broken right now, so I gotta probably uninstall them and reinstall them. But again, uh, let's go ahead and keep playing this. Yeah, it, it, it runs fine, it looks good. I don't have any issues whatsoever. Uh, muzzle fire, everything is fine. There, there is no complaints outside of the resolution. Now, what I will say, it, it is possible to change the physical resolution. Remember, Steam decks work exactly the same way as any typical computer. So if you go to graphics, you can change the graphics. Though the highest is 1800, 1200 by 800 because it's a Steam deck. But if you flip over here, you have the option to actually scale the, uh, see if I can find it. I uh, probably can't see it right here, but you have the option to actually scale the game in a way where it, it's in its true graphics, which I would never ever in a million years suggest that, primarily because your game is going to break it and you don't want to mess up your Steam Deck just messing with the settings. I was about to use a different word and I forgot that this is the Ian West Network. It's a more of a family friendly channel. So with that being said, works very, very well. Um, again, I didn't expect myself to really be playing so many games on a Steam Deck, but I do. I actually find myself playing this more than, my, than sitting in front of my computer. And it's not really an issue. Obviously, I'm gonna switch between the both of them, especially when new games come out. But the Steam Deck is very, very good. I like it. Especially, I have the base model for $399, and it's using a 512 gigabyte SD card. Um, so I can hold all my games on it. So it's not some high-end, super high-end SD card. I'm using a bare bones generic one on purpose just to see, you know, under different circumstances and under different SD cards, how well the game runs. Again, no game so far has crashed. I had this thing for about a month now. I had slowdowns, but I never had it crash yet. Uh, not much more to say about this particular game. I want to go over and do probably one more. Uh, I'm not sure which one, either Red Evil 4 Remake or uh, Cyberpunk. I'm not sure which one. I'm playing both currently, and I'm gonna let you know how that looks in real time also. So instead of Cyberpunk, which originally I was gonna load up for you guys, but because Cyberpunk has a lot of cursing and things like that, and I have the dialogue on the bottom so you can read it, I wanna keep this a family-friendly video, and I'm not gonna show you how that looks. Also, I'm not gonna kill anything for obvious reasons, because again, I don't want to say 18 or older. But this right here is Red Evil 4 Remake. Now, initially when this game first came out, there were graphical issues where like the foliage, if you don't know what that is, it's like grass and stuff like that, I'll just use that terminology, just didn't come out as sharp as it should. Village, to me, seemed like it was graphically more intense than Red Evil 4 Remake. Uh, still a wonderful game, don't get me wrong. It's a very good game, it's a very good remake, 
it, it, it enhances on what the original did in my opinion, but also it turned the dialogue, it kind of took a step back, it's a little bit worse to each their own, but still, either way, great game. So if you take a look at this right here, I am actually, well, I have a mask on Leon right now, so you can't see his face, because I've actually went through a different playthrough. Right now it's on hardcore, I believe. But anyway, or professional, one of the two, I forget the level. So this right here is how the game looks. As you can see, it runs very, very well. There aren't any slowdowns, there aren't any issues whatsoever. Uh, I actually played this entire thing on the normal difficulty on the Steam Deck. Uh, I did one hardcore level on, uh, what was it called? The PC, but I decided, you know what, for video purposes, when I do the review on this guy, which I'm doing currently, I wanna play it on like current gen games on the Steam Deck instead, completely through to let you know the issues that I had. And again, I had only one slowdown so far, and that was, you know, on the original game, you run from boulders. On this one, like, there's areas that collapse. Let me give you an example. Let me run over here and show you. So, like, these type of things collapse in certain areas. And you're supposed to press the dodge button, but it actually froze. And by the time it, the game caught up with the skip, I was already hit. Outside of that, boss battles, I didn't have any slowdowns, I didn't have any issues. The frame rates didn't dip under 30, honestly. Well, again, I don't have the old screen overlay up here, so it might have dipped under 30 for all I know, but I'm not one of those gamers where I'm a whiny crybaby and complain about frame rates. As long as it plays smoothly, as long as I have minimal issues, I don't have a problem. I'm not here to tell you, oh, graphically, this is the best game ever. And, you know, you can turn your 4070 Ti up to the highest. Like, no, I'm here for the regular consumer that says, you know what? I want a PC, but I want something affordable. And a Steam Deck is only $400. You do not need a PC, again, to use this. You just need to be able to install Steam. Well, it comes with Steam, obviously, it's a Steam Deck. You make your own profile and you start buying games. Whether you do it off of a off-brand website or Steam itself, that is up to you. I leave that to the consumer. And you just install the game, you're good to go. Love the experience. I mean, it's super heavy, to be honest here. I used to get tired of holding it at times when I'm laying down in bed. But it's a very good system. You can't really go wrong with it. Everything sounds good. The sound effects, uh, bombs, like I said, slowdowns. I don't have any issues whatsoever. I'm just shooting to show you that, yeah, I don't have any issues. Anywho, with that being said, yes, I'm a hoarder. Uh, I normally have more stuff than this, but I keep putting first aid sprays inside of the uh, the boxes. I barely use them. I just been collecting them throughout the game. <laughs> I probably got at least 10 to 12 of them by now. But anyway, that is the section for video games. And honestly, let's just close with this video and see if this guy is actually worth purchasing. So to be honest with you guys, I love the Steam Deck. Now, I was a huge Switch fan, not because of what the games are on a Switch, but I do a lot of indie games. Unfortunately, I spent not that much money. I, I did spend a lot of money, but most of the games I bought on the Wii Shop were on sale. So I bought Blasphemous on there. I had to rebuy it on here. I do plan on getting another Switch just so I can play certain side scroller games so I don't have to repurchase it on Steam because I really don't feel like doing that, like Ori 1 and 2 and things like that. I never got to finish them. But yes, the Steam Deck so far works very, very well for me. now. This review that you're seeing right here is strictly for gameplay. Now, I understand that there are other things that you could do in a Steam Deck. You're able to install Windows and Linux and do all this extra stuff. I don't care about any of that nonsense because I bought this strictly for gameplay. I don't plan on installing GTA 5. I don't plan on installing anything outside of Steam. I don't care about experimenting with systems. I just want what works and I don't have a problem. But like I said earlier, Games like Dragon Age with the X on it will not work whatsoever. It's just not supported on a Steam Deck, especially given the fact that Steam didn't have controller support for these games anyway, up until I guess Dragon Age Inquisition, you had to use a keyboard and mouse and that's not for me. Uh, Death Space 2 is perfectly fine. If you're a uh, Dark Souls player, you're in luck. Dark Souls Remastered, Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls, I'm sorry, 3, 2. The first one doesn't work, the regular one, but the remastered one does. Elden Ring, don't worry, it works perfectly fine. I play that game on a regular basis. As a matter of fact, I have it installed right here. Uh, where is it? Elden Ring is verified, it works fine. Ender Lilies, games like Grime, Deedless Wonderland, whatever the heck the game is called. I love it, two side scroller. Back for Blood does work, even though there's an eye on it. All the bugs aren't fixed. So one thing you do do in Steam is if you hold the Steam button and press X, well, it won't pop up now, but what it does is it allows a keyboard to pop up while you're in game. 
and you're able to type certain things in. So for you guys out there that do console commands and things like that, you do have a full ability, I'm sorry, you have the ability to be able to type in what you want. Also, if you get the dock, which I don't currently have at the moment, well, I don't have it with me, put it that way. You can plug it in from the top and plug it into your TV or monitor or whatever. And then you can use your controllers, your Bluetooth controllers. You can use keyboards, hook it up because it has like three or four, four or five USBs in the back. Um, there are multiple Steam Deck setups that you can use to plug this in to hook it up to your TV. But I primarily use this for wireless reasons because I don't want this to replace my computer. It's just an enhancement so I can play in my bed or if I'm not at home or I'm with a family outing and I don't want to be around these people, the Steam Deck is available. So with that being said, I do highly suggest it. There is nothing in the market that's $399 that can beat this. I don't care what they come out with unless it's something that's similar to this that may have more power. I don't care about the screen being 1200 by 800. It's not that serious. I don't need an OLED screen. I don't need all these other features that don't matter. This optimizes games very, very well. It's They have battery replacements for like $65 to $90, depending on which edition of Steam Deck you have. It's very easy to switch yourself, which I'll do a tour, tutorial on that later when the time comes, but I love this thing. It's a purchase that I made on a whim. I didn't know it was gonna be this good, and it's been my go-to for games probably for the last, what, month or two, couple months since I had this. So yes, highly suggested Steam Deck. Like always, like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.